So, do you see your king? Do we see our king? Do we see Jesus Christ, our king, who provides for our most precious needs, for the forgiveness of our sins, for the strengthening of our faith, and for our forever life? It's uh, Dr. Martin Luther, in his explanation of the first commandment in his large catechism, that points me to God. And I'd like to share his uh, thoughts, quoting, A God is the term for that which we are to look for all good, and in which we are to find refuge in all need. And he continues, Anything on which your heart relies and depends, I say, is really your God. So as I think of that, Dr. Luther convicts me, and I say, dear Jesus, I, I look to you for all good and for eternal refuge. My heart relies and depends upon you Lord Jesus, my King. Amen. So, <laughs> are there times when we don't look to Jesus as our King? Instead, we look to other things or other people. Perhaps it could be our money, our possessions, our health, our intellect, our children, our family, our friends, our government. You know, whenever we turn away from God and from Jesus as our King, we sin. And we need to remember that all good things come from God. And not just good things, but the best of all things. For God so loves the world that He gave His one and only Son Jesus is our King, on who we can, we can depend for all good things and for eternal refuge. Jesus is our King so that our hearts can rely and depend on Him for forgiveness. Jesus is our King in all situations, whatever it may be, if it's a health situation or, or a financial or a personal crisis or any trial or any temptation. It is to Jesus, our King, to whom we should look, dep depend, and rely. But not everyone recognizes Jesus as King. And in our gospel today, St. Luke gives us some examples. Let's start first with what's happening. Here is innocent Jesus who has been condemned to death. And so now they lead him out of the city with two other men, both criminals who were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. And there are a number of people, there are quite a crowd gathered around to see the crucifixion of Jesus and these other two men, I suppose, but mostly there for Jesus. And in the crowd are religious leaders, the rulers. And what is it they do? <laughs> they, the rulers, even sneered at him, at Jesus. They said, he saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. Now these are the religious leaders. These are the ones who knew the Holy Scripture the best, right? They should have recognized Jesus as God's chosen one, the Christ, their king, but no, instead they reject him. Their sin, their pride, 
reject Jesus as their king. Instead, they rely upon themselves and their law as their king. Luke doesn't stop there. He shows us another person who has rejected Jesus as king. It is the first criminal. This one criminal who hung there hurled insults at Jesus. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. This, this, this criminal, in his question, aren't you the Christ, is like the rulers. He's sneering at Jesus in his question. And then, moreover, he, he says, save yourself and us, as if Jesus needed to be saved. Right? He, in this question, save yourself and us, is selfishly asking Jesus to take care of his needs, to get him off that cross, to save him from physical death, instead of recognizing his sin and asking Jesus for forgiveness. This criminal did not recognize, did not see Jesus as his king. But it's not all doom and gloom. Yes, the rulers rejected Jesus, did not see him as their king. And of course, they should have recognized being the, the religious people that Jesus did not come to save himself. The Messiah, the Christ, the chosen one of God did not come to save himself, but he came to save all sinners. They should have recognized that. At least that second criminal, I'm sorry, the first criminal, at least the first criminal asked Jesus to save him. The religious leaders didn't ask Jesus to save them. But as I say, there's not all doom and gloom. There is good news here. There's wonderful news. The second, the second criminal, he heard Jesus. Jesus is hanging on the cross. He heard Jesus say, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And by the grace of God, this second criminal had faith. This second criminal recognized his sin. But the amazing grace of God doesn't stop there. <laughs> this criminal becomes an evangelist. He tries to encourage the first criminal, to recognize his sin. He said, oh, excuse me. He said, don't you fear God? He said to that first criminal, since you are under the same sentence, we are justly punished, for we are getting exactly what our deeds deserve. But, but this man, this innocent Jesus has done nothing wrong. This second criminal, by the amazing grace of God, has turned into an evangelist to try and bring the, the first criminal to recognize his sin. But he, at least, did recognize his sin. And he asked Jesus for forgiveness. And he asked Jesus for eternal salvation. He turns to Jesus and says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And by the glorious grace of God, the faith that this man had to recognize his sin and ask for forgiveness and eternal salvation, Jesus Christ, his king, our king, my king, the king, turns to him and gives him the words of eternal life. The gospel that is so sweet. Jesus answered him. I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus is the king. But when we sin... We are like those religious leaders and we reject 
Jesus as our king. And when we ask Jesus to <clears throat> satisfy our selfish desires, we're like that second, that first criminal who only thought of himself and not of the forgiveness offered by Jesus. But when by the grace of God we recognize our sin and we turn to God and we hear his words, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. We are given forgiveness and God in Jesus our King, in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins and peace through His blood shed on the cross gives us all good and eternal refuge. For He, God, has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of Jesus Christ, our King, the Son He loves, in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus, your King, our King, my King, the King of all creation. Amen. And may the peace of God, which is given graciously and freely to all through the King, our King, Christ Jesus, guard your hearts and minds in true faith, now and into life everlasting. Amen.